pumpkin? You scared me. Why are you sneaking up on me like that? Tour gone. <laughs> well, it worked. I love your costume. <laughs> you look amazing. You really scared me. <sighs> the only thing I'm going to do differently is probably paint your face. Yeah, just to elevate the look a little bit. At a time that you would have done them. <laughs> well, I was actually in the middle of getting ready. Um, but it's just about to paint my face. So I have all my stuff out right here. I have my brushes. And I have a bunch of paints to choose from. You're up for it. We can paint your face for you. How do you feel about that? while I have you here I'm actually really excited to tell you about these Halloween murders or well, one of these Halloween murders that I've been researching for a paper that I'm writing yeah you want to hear good All right, so I'm gonna just dip my brushes in water you know I go Don't worry, don't be scared. You know, I'll try. I'll try not to be too graphic. I got you. <laughs> don't worry yourself, man. We're gonna make sure so you look real cute. And scary. Scary, of course. Can't forget the scary. <laughs> Did mom help you pick out your costume? I'm sorry I missed it, you know. You know how things are with school. I can't get the paint out for some reason. I'm having some problems getting the paint out. You know what I learned recently? That this little spike thingy. That's supposed to be, yeah. That's in the caps of these things. It's actually supposed to be like an opener. Did you know that? I didn't. One of my friends that showed me recently said she saw it on TikTok. <laughs> I've been breathing wrong at this point. <laughs> oh, look. Let me do another one so you can see. Let's do lemon yellow. That would be perfect. That's how it's like. Voila. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Okay. So we got yellow. Oh, let's do a really cute blue. This one's on open too. Here's a scarlet. Should be good. Oops. Sorry. Hope I didn't scare you. Ah, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Absolutely stunning. I know there's a lot of traffic today. Yeah. It's the season. And I love this bottle green. forest green I don't know why they call it bottle green I guess that's a thing you're the one in art school you should know I'm gonna really tool <laughs> mess with them too good. okay so which version do you want me to paint your face in do you want me to go dark or light 
do you want me to like go half and half and like give you half the dark version and half the light version i think we should go half and half because i feel like that we shot and i feel like that we get you a lot more candy <laughs> you ready half and half all right good now we'll do it all right so I'm just mixing these paints. I don't want them to apply evenly. Listen, I'm gonna go to art school. What thing art school? <laughs> there we go. Alright. Okay, so I'm just pulling up the information that I've been researching right here. Um, and it's about a Halloween killer named Ronald O'Brien was an optician in Deer Park, Texas in 1974. At the time, he was living with his wife. Oops. I'm sorry if I'm a little chaotic right now. <laughs> My bad. I'm just all over the place to them, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. But. Gotta clean these brushes between colors, you know that, you know that. You don't mix paint. That was a nango come out cute. In 1974, he was living in Pasadena, Texas with his wife they mean and their two kids their daughter elizabeth who was five at the time and their eight-year-old son timothy he was an optician he was a deacon at church. He was on the choir. And honestly, by all accounts, like from the outside of the in, this man was an upstanding citizen. Giving back to his community, showing up for his neighbors, upstanding citizen. So in Halloween, on Halloween, in 1974. Oh, I'm just trying to get it. Yeah, it's right here. Perfect. So on Halloween, in 1974, Ronald O'Brien took his two kids trick-or-treating. His neighbor's two kids tagged along. as long as well as his neighbor so it was six of them trick-or-treating they were having a good time collecting candy doing their thing and they came across this house where when they knocked nobody never answered the door so you know kids they're um, easily distracted and they're trying to collect as much candy as they can <sighs> so they're not trying to stick around and wait by you feel up in your door so they moved on to the next house but ronald lingered at the door while they moved on to the next house He eventually caught up to the group when he caught up with them though him claim say after they left the owner of the house eventually opened the door 
and gave him five pixie sticks. I, I don't know if you're familiar with pixie sticks, but do one quick Google search and I realized that these days they're actually coming in different shape and sizes. The pixie sticks that were from my time, I don't know about your time, but the pixie sticks that were from my time were the little plastic thingies and they had like a little seal on either end that was textured. I don't know if that's what yours looks like because I saw some like straw looking ones too. But yeah. So he came back with five pixie sticks. He gave two, one each to his children, and then he gave the other two. He split. He split another two between the neighbor's kids. So each of the neighbor's kids got one, and then the last one, he gave it to this little boy, who I'm recognized from church. Anywho, them trick or treat. Them have a good time, and. Everybody went home with them candy. It was an uneventful trick or treat session. Oh, this is already coming together. You look good, you're focusing to me. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't tell mom I cursed. <laughs> Don't you dare tell her. But you're already looking great. Trust me, you have done them. You have done them. They won't know what hit them. They're gonna be so scared. Everybody got there on fire. It's perfect. You gotta pay me for this. You owe me. I know some volunteer, but a job this good, you owe me. Anyway. Them reach home now and Timothy want eating candy. He's an eight, he's an eight year old. Like of course him go on eating candy right before bed. That's what kids do on Halloween. Like I just I didn't stay. <laughs> so Timothy decided to him want eating candy. And Ronald, his dad, agreed. So apparently He chooses the pixie stick. Well, according to Ronald, he chose to eat the pixie stick above all other candy. This young man probably had great things like Snickers. Him, they probably have like a Twix here and there. Honestly, there are so many superior candies to a fucking pixie, pixie stick. Again, please don't tell mom I cursed. Don't tell her. You chat too much. That's a your problem. But just let me fuck up your face. Okay, then I agree that she won't say anything. <laughs> Good. Good. We're in agreement. I'll try not to curse so much. Around you at least. <laughs> So Timothy, according to Ronald, Ronald decides him as a choose a pixie stick. At first he couldn't get it open because it didn't have to open. So Ronald helped him open it. Timothy tasted it and he was like, yo, when I go this taste this bitter. So Ronald, his dad, decides to make him some Kool-Aid to wash it down. Good old Shackleberry Finn. Came in handy. It almost immediately though, as soon as the Kool-Aid washed down the pixie stick, this little picnic run down a bathroom. Like he's sick, he's throwing up, he's convulsing. His body has literally gone into shock. 
less than an hour later, Timothy dies on his way to the hospital. Come to find out, he was poisoned and the pixie stick was actually laced with cyanide. Yeah, cyanide. According to police, the pixie stick he ate contained enough cyanide to kill two adults. Remember, said this pain was eight years old, you know. Timothy was only eight. And this child ate enough cyanide to kill two big ass people, two grown adults. Yeah. Anyway. Initially, Mr. O'Brien was not a suspect. However, police walked around and they retrieved the other four pixie sticks. So Elizabeth had one, their daughter, she had one. So remember that she, she got one. Each of the neighbor's kids got one. And then that little boy from church, he got one too. When they collected, Elizabeth's and the other kids own all four of them they had enough cyanide in them to kill three adults so Timothy Timothy's pixie stick was a small scene small scene small small scene I never know and compare it to for them anyway when police asked Mr. O'Brien him for bringing them back to the house where he got the pixie sticks well he where he claimed to have gotten the pixie sticks initially he claims him never remember which police found strange because they had only trick-or-treated on two streets it's only two streets how you remember which was off of two streets anyway <laughs> that was the first thing that made them start to suspect him and one day they brought him back to the neighborhood and they're walking around and they're trying to find the house and then probably circle the block two or three times before he finally brought them to the house where he claims to have gotten the pixie sticks He told the police that he hadn't seen the owner's face but after everybody else had left the person they didn't turn on lights or anything them eventually opened the door crack it then open it all the way they cracked the door shoved their hand out and handed him the five pixie sticks says he didn't see the person's face but he knows that it was a man and his hand was hairy all right cool Anyway, once I really like playing in paints. <laughs> once they found the house, um, they found out that the owner was an air traffic controller at a nearby airport, and on Halloween night, he was actually working late, and he had over two hundred witnesses that gave him an alibi. So this man was ruled out as a suspect. So right away, the only other person that was tied to those pixie sticks were, of course, Mr. Ronald O'Brien. And that's when police started really looking at him. Like, would he poison his own son? And if so, why would I do that? Like, who does that? Anyway, they start digging to him and they realize that this man is hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they found out that he was $100,000 in debt in 1974. So today, that would, the equivalent of that would be like half a million dollars. Half a million dollars in a debt. His car was about to be repossessed. 
the house, the family home was about to be foreclosed on. The man couldn't hold on a job for saving life. It was revealed that in the 10 years leading up to the incident, he had 20 jobs in 10 years. That's less than six months at each. And he was being investigated at his current office where he was an optician, remember? Optician. For theft. <laughs> Someone had accused him of stealing. So he was being investigated and he was on the verge of losing that job too. So he was desperate. They continued to dig. Come to find out, say, nine months before Halloween, he took out an insurance policy worth ten thousand dollars, which today would be about fifty grand. He took out an insurance policy on Timothy worth ten thousand dollars, and he took out one for Elizabeth too worth ten thousand dollars. So that's twenty thousand dollars on his kids that he took out nine months before the incident. Then, a month before Halloween, come to find out that he took out another $10,000 on each of his kids. So, so far we had to like, what, a $40,000 insurance policy? Then, days leading up to Halloween, him took out one next $10,000 for each of them. So that's a one total of 60 grand, which today would be $600,000 worth of life insurance on his kids. Why they allowed him to update the policies so frequently in such a short period of time? I don't know. I don't know what play, what policies these insurance companies have in, have in place. But he was allowed to do that. But that's not all. There's more. <laughs> in the days leading up to Halloween, it was revealed that Ronald visited a chemical supply plant inquiring about purchasing cyanide he didn't buy anything though he left when he found out he couldn't buy less than must say five pounds but he had to buy it in bulk so he left but that's not the only evidence i have against him but i'm gonna get to that The morning after Timothy did, you want to know what this master criminal did? Guess. No, I want you to guess. I'm going to tell you what more you guess. Close. So the morning after his son's death, his firstborn's death, his only son's death, this master criminal calls the insurance company and asks them how soon he can cash out on Timothy's life insurance. Anyway, you know said so them lock him up, right? <laughs> this man is going to jail. <laughs> so they arrested him, then indict him on five counts, one count of capital murder for Timothy and four counts of attempted murder for those other four pixie sticks that were out there floating around with those poor kids and the master criminal the master criminal of course pled not guilty to all five counts because even though all the evidence was pointing at him he was never going to admit it he was too ashamed and I get it be ashamed too to let greed force me to do something as heartless and cold as killing my only when my only son my first bond also wicked but if that wasn't enough if that, that wasn't enough evidence to put this man away to mark him as guilty there were so many key testimonies in the trial that one Make you realize how stupid he really was. Um, stupid and desperate <laughs> he really was. And really how delusional in thinking that he could get away 
with something like this. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Nah. Our parents would never do that to us. They love us too much. I mean, sure, you're a pain in the ass, but... And have your back. Don't worry yourself. That nigga's not a manga ever happened to. If anything, I'm here for worry about. <laughs> okay, let me see. Yes. Alright, so I'm almost done. A few finishing touches. And then. We can do it same. So during the trial, there were a few testimonies that really sealed his fate. And one of them was his wife's. So you remember how Ronald claimed say Timothy was the one who chose, who decided to eat the pixie stick, which never made no sense to me or you because why would you want to start with a pixie stick? <laughs> anyway, the wife refuted that. She basically said that, yo, listen, Ronald forced Timothy to eat the pixie stick. Timothy, that wasn't Timothy's choice. And Ronald forced him to eat it. All right, cool. So one testimony. Apparently he has a friend who's a chemist. And the summer before, the summer of 1973, the friend said, Ronald, link him and ask him questions. I'd ask him questions about cyanide. And he wanted to know how much of it would be lethal. His friends, family, co-workers, all of them testify say leading up to Halloween, he had just displayed an unusual obsession with cyanide and how much of it kills, you know? And in a so it gets worse. <laughs> yes. It does get worse. He was not <laughs> cut out for this murder life at all. But there was a chemical salesman who says, who testified that Ronald contacted him asking him how he can go about buying cyanide. His brother in law and sister in law say that on the day of, of his son's funeral, this child is barely in the ground and this man is talking about all the things that he wants to spend the insurance money on which was a long vacation and some other things that he wanted to buy you know say never take the jewelry long if you come back with one guilty verdict yeah come back with one guilty verdict um and they sentenced him to death yep capital punishment his execution he managed him and him lawyer they managed to delay his execution three times before he was finally executed in march of 1984 which was 10 years after he murdered his son almost 10 years oh you look great I think we're done i just have one last one last thing to yes on the day of his execution apparently there was like a crowd of people who gathered outside and they were shouting trick or treat they're basically celebrating his death and they were throwing candy at people who were protesting um the death penalty He did have, he did maintain his innocence until his death. Why he would do that? I don't know, someone who's into psychology, please tell me. But he did have some last words that I do want to read to you. Because <laughs> I find them interesting. Let me just finish you up here. Alright, 
Are you that? I'm excited for you to see it. But before I show you, let me tell you what Ronald had to say. So, his last words, he says, he felt that the death penalty was wrong. And he says, I forgive all. And I do mean all those who have been involved in my death. God bless you all. And may God's best blessings be yours. <laughs> no, I personally think that was an open and shut case, but what do you think? You think he did innocent for true? My thoughts exactly I don't miss it. Anyway, you look amazing. I want you to go look in the mirror right now, but this this is a costume. You gotta find them. You gotta find them. They might go run. They might go shook. <laughs> I promise you. Okay, have fun pumpkin and walk with it.